the bandit who robbed himself. It seems impossible that a bandit could rob himself, but that's exactly what this bandit did. This bandit lived a hundred years ago, back when people traveled almost entirely by horseback. Mr. George Whitfield was no exception. Mr. Whitfield was a preacher, a great evangelist who traveled through the country on horseback, preaching wherever he could find a place to preach and people to listen. Well, Tom, I'm going to preach at White Hollow, and that's a long way away, so get up. Get up, Tom. Get up. Not far from White Hollow, old Sam Rowe is waiting for the parson to take him to the community meeting house where he is to preach that night. Yeah. <laughs> He's late, the parson is. Unusual for him, too. Yeah, he'll surely be along soon. There he is, sauntering along now, as if he doesn't have a care in the world. Whoa there, whoa there, Tom. Whoa. Yeah. Greetings, Brother Sam. Uh, howdy, Parson. You're late. Yep. But the good book teaches, Brother Sam, that it's better to do an act of kindness and be late than not to have done a kindness at all. The uh, Bible says that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, then it must be true, because the Bible sure is true. Sure is, Brother Sam. Uh, hadn't we better get going, Parson, so as not to keep the folks awaiting at the meeting house? Yep. Lead the way, Brother Sam. Yeah, uh, all right. Get up here. Come yeah, on, boy. Get up, Get Tom. up. Uh, did you uh, save someone's life or something like that, Parson? Save someone's life? Yeah, this good deed you did, it, it caused you to be late. Oh, that. Nope, nothing so heroic, Brother Sam. I just helped the widow Belden. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she was about to lose her place, so I gave her $46. Now she can live in peace without fear of losing the roof over her head. $46? You gave Widow Belden $46? Yep. Uh, I didn't know Parsons had that much money. Oh, I've been saving it up for years. Well, then why did you go and give it away? Well, that's what I've been saving it up for. Uh, seems sort of foolish to me, saving just so you can give it away. Oh, not at all, Brother Sam. When the Lord brings a case of distress to our attention, he wants us to help relieve it. Yes. Uh, you, you'll be on the distress list yourself if you keep on giving away all your money like that. Oh, the Lord will take <laughs> care of me. <laughs> the two rode on, following the trail through the woods. Presently... Ah! <laughs> it's a masked rider coming up behind us. It's probably a bandit, so we better stop, as he says. Uh, whoa, Tom, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Oh. All right, I want your money. Hand it over. We don't have any money. Your money or your life? Well, I have a little money here in my purse. It contains everything I own in this world. You better give them your purse too, Sam. <laughs> you ought to be strung up robbing a parson like this. Why, you a parson? He sure is. Can't you tell he's a parson? Are you a parson? I preach the word of God whenever the occasion demands. Want me to give you a little discourse on the... I want of... your money. All of it. Well, you already have all mine. On my word as a parson, the purse I just gave you contains all my worldly possessions. You. Give me your purse and be quick about it. <laughs> and don't try any funny stuff. <laughs> well, hey, here you are. You, 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 bandit, you. <laughs> yeah, I am a bandit, ain't I? The good book <laughs> says, thou shalt not steal. Oh, I'm not stealing, parson. I'm just borrowing. <laughs> well, all thieves are in danger of eternal all fire right, and all brimstone. Right, Parson, all right, cut out the preaching. You and your buddy get along. And don't look back. You know what's good for you. This six-shooter just itching to do business. Thank you, Mr. Bandit. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. Get up, Tom. Go, Tom. Let's go. Get up. 
Careful, I I like to meet that bandit and uh, pull him careful, up. And careful, uh, brother Sam. Well, Anger ain't good for the soul it, or for the stomach. But he robbed me of any penny I had. Yeah. And now, brother Sam, <laughs> who's the smart one, you or me? Hmm? Uh, what do you mean, Parson? Uh, I gave most of my money away to the widow Belden. It's doing her some good. Now, you kept your money, and now the bandit has it. It'll do no one any good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, guess you're right, Parson. Hey, a rider coming up from the rear here. Hey, it's that bandit again. Well, we'd better stop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. Uh, I wonder what he wants this time. He already has the money. Whoa, whoa. What, what do you want now, my friend? Your coat, Parson. It's nicer than mine. And with it on, people will think I'm a parson. <laughs> That'll be a joke on them. Very well, my friend. You shall have my coat. And here. your hat, please. All no, right, my hat, too. Here you are. And here are my hat and coat for you. Oh. My ragged coat and my frayed hat. Wearing them, Parson, you may be mistaken for a bandit. Uh. Maybe even shot at. <laughs> That'll be a joke on you. Oh, well, thank you, my friend. Put the hat and coat on, Parson. I want to see what you look like. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> hey, you know what? You look like a bandit, and I look like a parson. <laughs> well, so long, gents. So long. Oh, that, yeah. that, fella, that fella has a certain sense of humor. Yeah. With your coat on, he, 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 he does look like a parson. And you, <laughs> you look like a bandit. <laughs> yeah, well, the Lord looks on the inner man, not the outer. Yeah, well, anyway, parson, uh, we'd better get going. Get up here. Get up! Get up! Uh, get up, Tom! Get up! Let's go! So the two men started once more for the community house. Suddenly, hey, Parson Ed, that, that bandit, he, he's coming up behind us again. Oh, don't worry about it, Brother Sam. He can't get anything more from us. He's already got everything we have. Well, he can take our lives. Oh, now, why would he want to do that? Well, maybe he's afraid we might recognize him sometime and, and testify against hey, him. that could be. Yes, hey, sir. Perhaps we'd better run for our lives. I think so, Parson. The meeting house just beyond that hill. Maybe we can make it before the bandit catches up with us. All right, we get can up, try. Get, get up, up here. Yeah. Come on, boy. Get up. Get Come on. Here. Parson and Sam stuck spurs to their mounts, making all possible haste to reach safety of the meeting house before the bandit could catch up with them. The race continued neck and neck for several minutes. Finally, the bandit, realizing that he was not going to overtake them, suddenly pulled up his mount, turned, and made hasty retreat to the nearby woods. We're going to make it! Yeah, we're going to make Sam, it! Sam, we're safe now. When the meeting was over... Parson, my husband and I are expecting you to spend the night with us, will you? Oh, delighted to, Sister Damon. I always look forward to visiting Christian homes. Well, this has been a charming evening, but uh, it's rather late. Perhaps I'd better retire. As you wish, Parson. You know where your room is. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. When the Parson got in his room... Yes. And as everyone, even the Damons, was curious about this coat, but no one had the nerve to ask me about it. <laughs> and I suppose Brother Sam thinks I ran from the bandit because I was afraid. But that isn't the reason at all. Now, when that bandit handed me his coat, it was heavy, awful heavy. Something in the pocket. Now I'm going to find out what that something is. Ah a leather pouch and inside just as I thought money silver gold <laughs> must be that bandit's gleanings from many holdups well no wonder he was after this coat but he gave it to me in fair exchange for my coat so what's in this coat rightfully is mine well that's one time the bandit outsmarted himself <laughs> almost like robbing himself 
Oh, there must be several hundred dollars here. Well, now I can help someone else in distress. Dear Lord, I thank thee for increasing my worldly goods with this that thou hast given into my hand. Help me to do good with it and lead me Well, Uncle Dan, I'd say Pastor Whitfield's experience is a good example of Romans 8.28 in action. You mean the fact that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose, even being robbed by a bandit? Right, and Pastor Whitfield was doing the Lord's work. Yes, he was. But you know, I wonder if that bandit's going to remember to get a bottle of glue and take a bath before the next attempt at robbery. What? Glue? A bath? Uncle Dan, what are you talking about? Well, Aunt Carol, every outlaw knows he needs glue for a stick-up and a bath for a clean getaway. Oh, Uncle Dan, you are so funny. (laughs) (laughs) Well, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, you know. Well, thank you for giving us all a dose. You're all welcome, I'm sure. But now are you ready to take down our address? Good. It's your story hour, Box 8, Niles, N-I-L-E-S, Michigan. 49120. That's Box 8, Niles, N-I-L-E-S, Michigan, 49120. When you write in to request the adventures, don't forget to give us your full name and address so we know where to send them. Thanks again for joining us. Goodbye for now, and remember... Smile, God loves you and me.